Now I'm going to show you the last bit of the transition that we have to do before we get into the actual set of movements that's commonly recognized as grasping the sparrow's tail. So we just finished facing off to the east. What we're going to do is tip the left hand so that it's palm down. We're going to scoop up with the right hand so that it's palm up. So it's like we're grabbing a big beach ball. And at the same time, we're going to step up with the right foot. So from here, I'm facing the east. And I'm going to tip my left hand over, bring my right hand underneath, and step up with the right leg. From here, I step back, touch with the toe, set the heel down. I'm going to shift to the right, turn the left foot in, turn back toward the west, and round out with pung, or the first movement of the grasping the bird's tail. So once again, we're off to the east. Our weight is shifted to the left leg. Right hand's pushing to the south. Left hand's palm up. From here, you tip the left hand down, scoop up with the right hand, step up with the right leg. So you're still facing off to the east here. Step to the west with the right foot. Set the heel down. And as you start to shift back, you're going to turn the left foot in. And you're still kind of holding that ball shape in front of you. And what you're going to do is round so the right arm kind of sweeps up and out, still holding that structure like you're holding a ball. And the left hand stays behind it like you're pressing that ball into the right arm. At the same time, you turn the right foot out and shift forward or in the west direction. Again, from here, tip the left hand down, scoop up with the right, stepping in with the right leg. Step back behind in the west direction with the right foot, touching with the toe. Set the heel down. Start to turn the left foot in. Then as you turn the right foot out and shift to the right leg or in the west direction, you're going to round out with the right arm here. Now here you'll notice that my arms aren't touching. My left hand's back a little ways from my right arm here. It's almost like I could take a beach ball and hold it against my forearm with that left hand here. But there would still be that space for the beach ball between the two arms. Facing this way. So this is south for me, towards you is west, away from you is east. So from our second part of the transition, we're going to tip the left hand down, scoop up with the right, step in with the right leg. Now here, notice when I step back, again, it's not straight back. It's back and across a little bit so that when I turn, I have that distance between my legs. I'm not walking a tightrope. I have my right leg on my right side of the body, and I have my left leg on the left side of my body. Again, from here, left hand tips down, right hand scoops up, step in with the right leg. Step back and across a little, touching with the toe. Set the heel down, turn in with the left leg, turn out with the right, and round out with the right arm. Here, make sure that you're keeping your shoulder relaxed. Don't round out like this. Drop the shoulder down, sink the chest slightly, keep the arm rounded. Left hand is back behind, but not touching. There's a gap between the two. Also notice that my left elbow is in close to the body. I'm not pushing like this. The elbow is dropped in protecting the ribs here. Again from here, step up with the right, tipping the left hand down, the right hand palm up, step back with the right, set the heel down, turn the left toe in, and as you turn the right toe out, shift to the right, pressing out with that pung, that roundness. Now you're facing to the west again. Now I'll show you as if I'd started the form facing directly away from you. So this is now south for me. This is my west, this is my east. So I just finished the last part of the transition that we've done, or the second part of the transition here. I'm facing the east. This is the south. That's the direction I started the form. Tip the left hand down, bring the right hand palm up, step in with the right leg. Step back with the right, touch with the toe. Turn the left foot in. Turn the right foot out, shift, and expand rounding out and up with that right arm facing to the west. Again from here, step up with the right foot, step back with the right, touch with the toe, set the heel down. Turn the left foot in, and as you shift to the right, turning to the west, round out with the right arm, holding that ball 
between the two arms. Now I'll show you is if I had started the form facing this way. So this is my south, west, and east. My last part of the transition had us facing to the east. So that's where I'll start is here. Step up with the right foot. Step back with the right foot. Set the heel down. Turn the left foot in. Turn the right foot out and open to the west. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, the chest rounded, and the arms relaxed. From here, step up, turning the left hand palm down, right hand palm up. Step back with the right leg, turn the left foot in, round out with the right arm, shifting to the right, facing to the west. So we've completed the transition portion of this movement. Let's do all the transition together a couple times in each direction. Then we're going to actually complete this movement, adding the last parts of the grasping the sparrow's tail set. So from the end of the first movement, we round, turn to the west. Shift to the right foot, bring the left foot in. Step back with the left. Start to turn toward the east. Right hand pushes out toward the south. We open the left hand out as we turn to the east. From here, we turn the left hand palm down, step up with the right, step back with the right, gently touch, set the heel down, turn the left foot in, round out to the west. If I'd started the form facing this way, we would do the circle, turn to the west. Shift forward, extending out the right arm, step back with the left leg, turn the right foot in, Open out with the left arm to the east. Left hand turns palm down. We step up with the right leg. Step back. Set the heel down. Turn the left foot in. Turn the right foot out. And open or round out to the west. From the first move of the form, we round. Turn to the west. Shift forward. Step up with the left foot. Step back with the left foot. Turn the right foot in. Push out to the south with the right hand, open out to the east with the left hand. Left hand turns palm down, you step up with the right foot, step back with the right foot, touch with the toe, set the heel down, turn the left foot in, turn the right foot out, shift to the west, rounding out with the right arm. So if I would started the form facing this way, I'm going to do my roll around the wrist, turn to the west. Shift to the right foot, bring the left foot in. Step back with the left, touch with the toe, set the heel down, turn the right foot in, open the left foot out, turning to the east. Left hand turns palm down, right comes up underneath, palm up. Step in with the right foot, step back, touch with the toe. Turn the left foot in, dropping the left elbow. And as you turn the right foot out, shift to the right, round out with the right arm. Okay, so now that we're done with the transition, we're actually going to do the grasping the sparrow's tail movement. We did the first movement of it already, which is the pung or the warding off. The next movement is lu, roll back. The movement after that is press or squeeze. And then the last movement after that is to push. So again, I'm going to start as if I had started the form facing you. I'm off facing to the west with the ward off that we just finished. So I'm here. From here, I'm going to drop this elbow and I'm not just going to drop the elbow. I'm going to turn the body and see how that pulls my shoulder across. It was here when I turned the hips. Kind of naturally, if I was to leave my wrist in contact with something there, it would naturally drop the elbow in. So from here, I'm going to turn, drop the elbow in. As I'm doing that, I'm going to shift back a little bit. So my weight goes from majority on the right with a little on the left, two more on the left as I turn the body and drop the elbow. From here, I'm going to push forward again. And as I do that, I'm going to extend both arms, left hand next to the elbow, palm down, right hand extending out, palm up. So from Pung, shift back, turn the hips, drop the elbow. From here, push forward, extending out. Then the hands, as my body motion changes, the hands change. So I turn my hips back to face that direction. And as I do that, the hands change. So from here, drop, up, 
hands change. Shift back, pulling in. So right hand's palm down, left hand is palm up. I'm shifting to the left leg, pulling both hands in toward me. And I want to keep some distance between the two. I don't want them right next to each other or one over the other. I want them here. So I pull back here. Now I'm going to leave that right hand out there, and we're going to do another hip motion. And this time what we're going to do is circle the wrist around. It's almost like the fingers are stuck to a, a fixed point, and we're circling the wrist around and then pressing palm down. So your palm up when you pull back. You push forward with the left side of the hips, which pushes that wrist out and around. You drop back with the left side of the hips, which drops that hand palm down. So from here, you go here. Then from here, you're going to pull in the right hand, place the edge of the left hand in the crease of the right wrist, bring the arms up. You're going to make kind of a circle motion as you come up. And instead of just making a circle, you're going to push out toward the west here. So the right arm's rounded again, just like our first movement of grasping the sparrow's tail that wore it off. But this time, the left hand has the edge of the hand in the crease of the right wrist pressing it out here. So let's do that much again. From our ward off, turn the hips to the left, dropping the right elbow down, shifting the weight back slightly. Push forward from the back leg, extending out with the arms, right hand palm up, left hand palm down. Use the hip motion to turn the hands over, shift back, pulling in. The right hand stops here, the left hand circles around from the hip motion so that both hands are palmed down. Turn the body to bring the right hand across. Left hand goes in the crease of the right wrist. Arms come up along the left side of the body and press out back in the west direction. From here, the hands just simply turn palm down. They slide off of each other. You rock back, lifting the arms. Drop them down to shoulder height, shift forward, and settle the wrists as you push. So let's go through that all together. From Pung, or Ward Off, turn the body to the left, dropping the right elbow down. Push from the back leg, extending the arms. Turn the hands, palm down. Body motion, shift back. Using the hips, circle that left hand around, dropping it down, palm down. Right hand sweeps in. Hands travel up along the left side of my body. Press out with the left hand in the crease of the right wrist toward the west. Hands turn palm down. They slide off of each other, both palm down, shoulder width apart. I rock back. Drop the hands to shoulder height. Bring the elbows in, shift forward, leading with the fingers. And at the end of that push, you settle the palms. Now I'm going to show you as if I'd started the form facing this way. So this is south for me, toward you is west, away from you is east. We just finished the first movement of the grasping the sparrow's tail, ward off or pung. From here, I'm gonna, my hips are forward to the west, and what I want to do is bring them back to face south, and at the same time, I'm dropping back a little bit toward the left leg. That's what brings that elbow across. So from here, here. Now, I've compressed that left leg because the majority of my weight was forward, so it was almost straight when I was here. When I shift back, I compress that leg and push from there to extend out with the arms. I turn my hips back toward the west to rotate the hands. Then I shift back, pulling in with the right hand palm down, left hand palm up. From here, I push the left side of my hips forward to push the wrist around. And then as I drop back, the hands palm down and drops down. So from here, it circles around, drops down. The right hand comes in. Left hand goes in the crease of the right wrist. They circle up the left side, turn back to the west, and press. From here, the hands turn palm down and slide off of each other, so they're shoulder width apart. I rock back, raising the arms. Bring them down to shoulder height, and here notice that I bring the elbows in. And from there, I shift forward, leading with the fingers, and at the end, settle the wrists or press with the palms there. Again, from word off, we're going to turn to the left, drop the right elbow. Extend up and out, 
with the arms, right hand palm up, left hand palm down. Use the body motion to rotate the arms, shift back and pull. Right hand's palm down, left is palm up. From here, I circle the wrist around till the hand is palm down, the left hand is palm down. So it was palm up, push the left side of the hips forward, drop the left side back, palm down. Right hand comes in, left hand in the crease of the right wrist. They slide up along the left side of my body. I turn back to the west and press out. Hands turn palm down. They slide off of each other. I rock back, lifting the arms. They sink down. I bring the elbows in, shift forward, and press or push. Now I'm going to show as if I'd started the form facing that way. So that's south. This is west. The last part of the transition left us in the first movement of grasping bird's tail or grasping the sparrow's tail that has us facing off to the west, which is ward off. From here, drop that elbow down for the right arm. Push forward, extending the arms out. Rotate the arms using the body motion. Shift back and pull. Circle the left hand around till it's palm down. Bring in the right hand, placing the left hand in the crease of the right wrist. Bring the arms up along the left side of the body. Turn back toward the west and press. Hands turn palm down. They slide off. You rock back. They drop down to shoulder height, bring the elbows in, push forward, leading with the fingers, and at the end, settle the wrists. From ward off, turn to the left with the hips, drop the right elbow down. This is where you bend that left leg to set up for the extension. Extend out, using body motion, rotate the hands, shift back, pulling in. Left hand circles. Palm down, you bring the right hand in, placing the left hand in the crease of the right wrist. They slide up along the left side of your body, turn to the west, and press. Palms down, they slide off, you rock back, arms go up, lifting the right toe. Drop the hands down to shoulder height, bring the elbows in, shift forward, pushing with the fingertips, and settle the wrists at the end of the push. Now, if I'd started the form facing this way, so this is my south, I am going to angle myself just a little bit off to the side, so hopefully you can see some more of what's going on, and it's not just going to be a view of my back while my hands are doing something off over here. So in reality, I would be doing everything facing directly toward this wall. What I'm actually going to show is facing a little bit more off toward the corner, so you can still see things hopefully a little bit better. So from here, you turn. Shift back slightly, bending that left leg, drop the right elbow in. Push out. Roll the hands so that the right hand's palm down, the left is palm up. Shift back. Circle. And palm down. Right hand comes in, left hand in the crease of the right wrist. Arms come up along the left side. Then you press back toward the west. Hands go palm down, they slide off. You rock back, hands go up high. Drop the hands down to shoulder height, bring the elbows in, shift forward, and push. From ward off, turn the hips, drop the right elbow. Extend out, rotate the hands so the right hand goes palm down, the left goes palm up. Shift back and pull in. Push the left wrist around using that body motion. Pull the right hand in, placing the left hand in the crease of the right wrist. They slide up along the left side of your body, and you're going to press toward the west as you shift. Hands go palm down. They slide off. You rock back. Drop the elbows in. Shift forward and push. I'm going to try standing a little bit closer for this one. Hopefully you can see what's going on with the hands as I go through this. This form has a lot of little things in it where there's little intricate movements. And so I'm hoping all of this will come across in the actual footage that I'm shooting here and that you'll see the body motion that's involved in the different movements. So hopefully standing up a little bit closer will help show that if it wasn't seen very clearly when I was standing back where you could still see my feet.
Now the feet don't do anything necessarily particularly special in this. The only time where they actually change their position after you've sunk into Pung is that when you do the last movement where you rock back and then push, your right foot just lifts the toes up so you're on the heel, and then when you push forward, you set the toes back down. So that's the only thing that happens with the feet. Through the rest of this movement, they're basically just anchored to the ground. So I'm gonna start from here. I turn the hips to drop that elbow in. So from here, turn. From here, my weight shifted back slightly, so I'm gonna push forward from the back leg. That's the body motion that supplies the power for this. I'm not just staying here and turning with my weight on the right leg and then extending out with the arms. When I turn and drop that arm in, I'm sinking back a little bit. From here, I push with the left leg and extend out with the arms. So my right hand's palm up, my left hand is palm down next to the elbow. From here, I turn my body to change the arms. So my right hand was palm up, I need it to be palm down. My left hand was palm down, I need it to be palm up. So from here, they rotate. As I shift back, it's like I'm pulling, like playing tug of war, pulling on a rope, or pulling on someone's arm, and I shift back, bringing the arms in toward me. Left hand is still palm up, right hand is still palm down. Now I'm gonna use body motion, that hip motion, to send this arm around. So it's not just spinning around out in space. And what I'm not doing is keeping the wrist still and circling the hand around the wrist. I'm keeping the finger still and circling the arm around those fingers. Going from palm up, pushing the elbow out, coming back, palm down, pushing the palm down. So from the pull back, I rotate and settle. From here, my left hand is palm down now. I'm gonna bring the right hand in. And it's not just bringing the right hand in, it involves body motion also. It's not really obvious body motion, but you still need to make sure that the body is directing the arms, that they aren't doing things by themselves. So from here, the right hand comes across. And I'm just gonna bring it across till the left hand kind of runs into the crease of the right wrist. They're gonna slide up along the left side of the body. Then I'm gonna turn back toward the west and press. So this left hand is pushing against the crease of the right wrist. My arm is rounded just like in the first movement. This hand has the elbow in and is pushing into the wrist. From here, the hands go palm down. They slide off. I rock back, elbows come in, and this is where the toe comes up on the right foot. As I shift forward, I set the toe down, push out, leading with the fingertips, and at the end, settle the wrists. Once more through. Drop the elbow, extend out, hands rotate, palm down with the right hand, palm up with the left. Shift back and pull in. Rotate around with the left. So the wrist pushes out and around and drops down, being led by body motion. Right hand comes across, left hand goes in the crease of the right wrist, hands slide up along the left side of the body, I turn back toward the west and press out. Notice that this elbow is in, not out, here. Palms down, they slide off, I rock back, they raise up over my head, drop down to shoulder height, the hands do, elbows come in, push forward with the fingertips, settle the palms at the end of the push. I know for counting is one move of the form, that's a lot to learn. Take it in pieces at a time, make sure you get the transition down, each segment of the transition down really well, then start to tie those together before you add more, then tie that together before you add the last bit of it. So make sure that you take it in bite-sized pieces, because it's better to get each segment down really well before you add more than it is to try to get a really huge chunk like this movement is with the transition all at once and get each part kind of okay. As always, I hope this video was very helpful for you and your training time at home. Thank you so much for watching. So I want to talk to you about something that I found absolutely invaluable for me while I was training in China. Now, while I was over there, I was training six to eight hours a day, five days a week, and that is a lot of training. And as you can imagine, it takes a lot of energy to do that kind of training. So something that I had sent to me while I was over there to make sure I could keep my energy up was what's called Pure Trim. And they're basically meal replacement shakes. Now, they're used a lot of times for weight loss. Um, if someone's looking for a meal replacement that has a lot of good nutrients in it, that's gonna supply their body with the nutrition it needs while helping them lose weight rather than starving them 
while they're trying to lose weight, this is an excellent way to go. And that's kind of what the product was designed around, the concept that it was designed around. But also if you're just in a hurry, like I'm a college student, I teach, I work, I have a lot of stuff going on. So I don't always have time to make a meal, but I don't want to revert to like eating fast food from a fast food place because I know that's not healthy at all. So if you're like me and you very rarely have time to prepare a proper meal, um, it's a great way to still get your nutrition and be able to continue your daily routine. So it comes in a box like this. The box has 10 packets in it. So it's little packets like this, and each one of those packets is basically a meal replacement. So even if you're not in a hurry and you're not necessarily looking for a nutritious fast food, the thing that I love most about these shakes is that they give you a lot of energy. They don't have like caffeine or any of the other normal stimulants that you would find. Um, they're just good nutrition. So your body can use that nutrition to actually access all the energy in the food that you're eating rather than having to try to stimulate your body with something like caffeine. So that was the main thing that I noticed when I was using these shakes while I was over in China. So that at least was my experience with these shakes. I'm in love with them. I share them with anyone that I know that is looking either for more energy or a quick way to have a healthy meal on the go. If any of that sounds interesting to you, then check them out. Pure Trim Shakes, there's vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate flavors. You can get them at the website that's right here at the bottom of the screen. Check them out, Pure Trim.